Don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed him. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinkin' Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that son of a bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Who's that? Is he with us? Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did.
as the governor of New Mexico was paying for the kid's apprehension, Garrett was able to hire every gun man in Lincoln County. I knew that going through that front door meant putting my butt in a shooting gallery, so I decided to get sneaky. You're dead! Watch out! One of them! Ah, he's right behind me! Where the hell is Garrett's that? men were Never running around like a bunch of chickens well, with their heads cut off. Let's see these bitches running! <laughs> Here. Still, one of them reached the water tower. Not a bad idea. It would be a turkey shoot from up there. sharpest tools in the shed. I've got this. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few <sighs> bucks. voice yelling at me from the window. Back, back door! door. We got we'll you. cover you! Try aiming, you idiots! Truth be told, Down things weren't much better behind the house. that were left twice as many. They made up for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. It was a bit of a slog, 
but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, you I was inside, dead, none the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave. Deader than a rat in a trap! You think you can kill me too? How about that? And upstairs, I found Billy and Charlie Baudry. Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side! that it was time to cut and run. They got a gallon, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them around back. I'll draw their attention. He directed that order at me, and I thought, why the hell do I have to do it? But I went anyway. Dumbass that I was back then. that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack. What are you saying, old man? Jack, he's just joshing with you. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, where was I? You come out and I will. You were heading for the barn. Shoot, dare you.
Sounds like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah, and just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. the stables within my reach. And that's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked-on tin star. You read that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. killed him in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. I stepped inside and bam! <laughs> Last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? And, boy, that was just the beginning. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah, after I came to, the bastard had clocked me with his colt. And the kid surrendered? When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, 
All I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window, and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? The kids escaped raised a huge buzz. Oh. Hell yeah! That scatter gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. Guards were everywhere looking for it. jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but... Some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up in arms. And suddenly, I was a fugitive. How the hell did the kid escape? Garrett's gonna kick our ass! The windows, so that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever gonna find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. This town doesn't have a moment's peace. You! But hell if they weren't all waiting for me. Apparently, some of them thought I was Billy. You hooligans can go to it's hell! It's you or me! Man enough? He's in town somewhere! There. See, me and the kid shared a certain similarity in build and color. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean-ass shotgun. So much lead was whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. Leave him to me! God damn you! I knew I needed to find a hole. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beasts. We prize them too high, if you ask me.
where was the kid while you were busy getting shot at? Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. So I could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean ass shotgun. Kill! 